Hello all. Welcome back to BTO e Shikshana program. I, Dr. Sasmita Mahapatra, is here to take model two, that is microwave network theory and microwave passive devices from microwave and antenna subject, which is a prescribed subject for six semester electronics communication and telecommunication students. So today we'll be starting with our ninth and last class of this model. Now, till now, we have discussed regarding microwave network, microwave network theory with respect to S matrix and S parameters. And we have also seen the relationship of S matrix with Z and Y matrix. And we have worked out certain pro uh, problems based on S matrix and Z and Y matrix. And then we have done with the different microwave passive devices that we are going to use in many microwave system like coaxial connectors, adapters, and then uh, the microwave head shifters, microwave attenuators. Then we have seen various T junctions like E plane T, H plane T, and magic. Now today let us do certain problems based on this T junctions. And then we will finally discuss some of the pro some of the questions which are very important from mainly this micro passive devices. Coming for the first problem, the problem is from one H plane T junction. A 20 milliwatt signal is fed into one of the collinear port one of a lossless H plane T junction. So in port one, we are giving an input of 20 milliwatts. Calculate the power delivered through each port when the other ports are terminated in matched load. So we have to find out what is the power at each of the ports. So when it is one H plane team junction, basically we have three ports. So we have to calculate the power delivered at each of the port. Now, when we are considering the power at one port, we have to assume that the other two ports are match terminated. We have terminated them with some match impedance. So to start with, now this is the S matrix. So as you can see, so we have tried to do here the S matrix of H plane T, which already we have derived this with respect to the property of H plane T junction. We have derived this is the S matrix. So it is a three cross three matrix. And let us first find out the characteristics at port one. So as we discussed, when we are considering one port, the other two ports are assumed to be match terminated. So they are terminated, they don't have any input or uh, any in incident wave and any reflected. So since ports two and three are match terminated, so quickly we can tell that a2 and A3 are going to be zero, okay? So in that case, what is my reflection coefficient at port one? That is B1 by A1, if we are taking, so it is equal to S11. So usually S11 is nothing but B1 by A1, keeping your port two equal to zero and port three also equal to zero if we are finding out. So that is given as S11. Now from the matrix directly, we can take the value of S11. Here it is one. So here we have one by two into one. So it is one by two. Now the total effective power input at port one, how much power we have given. So we have got here the input power directly we have got here. It is the port one, the input given is 20 milliwatts. Now, how much power is effectively it has gone? So after reflection, how much power is transmitted? So that if we want to find out that is given according to the equation one by two A1 squared, which gives us the incident power into one minus reflection coefficient squared. So the incident power one by two A1 square, where A1 is the incident wave at port one is given as 20 milliwatts in the question itself, minus one uh, into one minus S11 square. So S11 is 0.5 square 
uh, so s11 modular square we are taking here and it is equal to 15 milliwatts we are taking okay now the power transmitted at port 3 similarly if you are trying to find out port 3 so we have to consider what is the s31 parameter here now for that if we'll go back s31 we can see here s31 is equal to uh, your uh, s31 is given as third row first one root 2 so 1 by 2 into root 2 is nothing but 1 by root 2 so replacing that value 1 by 2 into a1 square that is nothing but 20 the power carried by the incident wave okay so it is 20 milliwatts into s31 square so s31 is 1 by root 2 square so we got here it as 10 milliwatts similarly the power transmitted to port 2 the same way we can find out so <clears throat> the only input we have considered is the input power given at port 1 due to this what is the power transmitted to port 2 port 3 and uh, we are trying to find out so if you are trying to find out the power transmitted to port 2 that is again equal to 1 by 2 a1 square this is my total incident power into s21 square so again s21 also you can see so it is my value is minus 1 so minus 1 into 1 by 2 it's going to be 1 by 2 okay so 1 by 2 square so that is going to give us 5 milliwatts so if you see here p2 we got 5 milliwatts p3 we got 10 milliwatts and p1 already we have got is 15 milliwatts so to summarize we can tell that p1 is equal to p3 plus p that is one of the characteristics of H plane T junction, which already we have discussed. When we give input at port 2 and port 3, the output at port 1 is additive in nature. Both the inputs are getting added. So that is what we can see. Port 2 is 5 watts, port 3 is 10 watts added together. We are getting the output at port 1 is 15 watts. Okay. Coming to the next problem. The next problem is with respect to magic T. Now, we are assuming that the magic T is terminated at its collinear ports, port 1, port 2, and the difference port, port 4. So, port 3, we are taking as the additive port here. Collinear ports are 1 and 2. And we have, suppose, terminated all these uh, uh, ports with, uh, by impedances with certain reflection coefficient. We have, given, we have not done a matched impedance closing here. Rather, uh, mass termination is not done. Rather, we have reflection at each of the ports. So, port 1, we have reflection coefficient given as 0.5. Port 2, the reflection coefficient is 0.6. And port 4, we have got 0.5. If 1 watt power is paid to the sum port, okay, sum port 3, then calculate the power reflected at port 3. First, we have to calculate the reflected power at port 3. And we have to calculate the power transmitted to other three ports, that is to port 1, 2, and 4. Now, for S matrix of matched uh, magic T with collinear port 1 and 2, and some port is uh, 3, and the difference port is 4, we are considering. So we can write the S matrix is something like this. So it has four ports. So the S matrix is going to be a four cost four matrix. So we have already derived this during our discussion, the magic T, how it is represented in terms of its S matrix. Now, looking at this, we can see that if, F, if A1, A2, A3, and A4 be normalized inputs and B1, B2, B3, B4 are corresponding output voltage at one, two, three, four, if we are considering, then, a1 is equal to the reflection coefficient, the transmission coefficient into B1. A2 equal to the transmission coefficient at port 2 into B2. A3 is input applied voltage at port 3. And A4 is uh, the transmission coefficient 
into uh, at port four into B four. So we can find out very easily what is the incident power at port three. So port three incident power is half into A P square, which is already given in the question. It is equal to one watt. So we have got this value is one watt. So from this we can calculate what is the value of A three. Okay. So if we try to put it into one equation or B equal to S into A. If you will try to represent it in terms of this representation, B the standard representation for S matrix S into A. And if we'll try to replace the values, so we can replace B one, B two, B three, B four for all the four ports. And right hand side, we can first have the S matrix for magic T, and then we can have all the A one, A two, A three, A four. A three we have calculated root two, and A one, A two, A four we can have it with respect to its transmitting parameter T one, T two, T four. Okay. So with respect to that, we can write all these equations here. Now with that, uh, we will do the multiplication. Then uh, by solving, we will be getting four equations from this S matrix and B uh, matrix and A matrix. We can get all these four equations. Now by solving these equations uh, for B value, we can take the Carmer's rule. And then, according to the Kamas rule, we can solve it, and then we will be finding B one equal to point nine two eight, and then similarly by solving the according to Kamas rule, we will get B two, B three, B four. Now, what is the power transmitted at port one? It is half into B one square. So B one value has been calculated. A power transmitted. We can find out at port one. Similarly, putting B two value, we can find out out the power transmitted at port two, port four, and port. Okay. So these are very simple problems. But mainly, while doing these problems, we have to be clear regarding the S matrix of this magic T or H plane T and all this. So that is all with respect to your module two of microwave and antenna. Now, specifically, what type of important questions that we can expect from this part, mainly from your microwave passive devices part, is so one question can come: explain microwave coaxial connectors and adapters in brief. Sometimes this question comes; it's a direct question. So you can name. Some of the coaxial connectors and some of the adapters, and then you can do a diagram of this. Direct question comes, no twisting and all, so you can just write that. The next question can be, what is a microwave attenuator? So we have discussed what is one attenuator. Basically, there are two types of attenuator: a fixed attenuator and a variable attenuator. But in that, the main important is explain the working of a precision microwave attenuator. With neat data, the precision attenuator while doing, it's very important to write the construction of the attenuator clearly, and then each part of the attenuator has to be put clearly the working of each part, and then the overall working principle of the attenuator, and then we have to derive what is the attenuation factor with respect to the, um, with respect to the. S electric field. So, with respect to electric field configuration, uh, as we have already discussed, we have to find out the S matrix of the attenuator, and we have to find out what is the final attenuation at the output. Next important question can be, what is a microwave phase shifter? So, we can just define what is a microwave phase shifter and explain the working of a precision dielectric rotary phase shifter. So, as attenuator. So here also we have to explain each part of this phase shifter, and then we have to explain the overall configuration of the phase shifter and each part how they are going to work and the overall phase shifter how it is going to work. We have to be very defined with respect to the answer. 
and next question what is web guide key so we know what is a key junction we have to first define it and then explain how one e plane t and h plane t is constructed and works uh, so how one e plane t works and how one h plane t works separately we have to explain its construction and working and accordingly we have to derive the s matrix for each of them then coming for the final one what is a web guide t so it's very important for the exam so what is one web guide t junction and explain how one magic t is constructed and works and derive s matrix for one matrix okay so these are certain important questions from your module 2 and uh, of microwave and antennas i hope all of you are clear with respect to all these classes uh, which are built with we have built with your module 2 microwave network theory separately and microwave passive devices separately still if anybody is having any doubt with respect to any topic can contact me i am dr sasmita associate professor at sir mbit college bank so thank you and all of us